What size training collar should you buy? And why is the size so important? Could it actually make a difference on whether or not it works with your dog? We'll find out on today's episode of Keeper Collars TV. Every single day we get at least one collar returned for only one reason. The dog was measured wrong. Before I show you how to measure your dog correctly, let's take a closer look at the collar and understand exactly why size is that important. The collars don't work because you're forcing the dog. It works because the prongs squeeze on the sides of the dog's neck, just like mama did when they're puppies talking to the puppies with her mouth, telling her what to do, what not to do. We're just trying to become mama dog. Now, when you squeeze on the sides of the neck, you're talking dog to your dog, it understands that. As soon as you reach the end, however, instead of squeezing on the sides of the neck, then you start lifting on the trachea. And mama dog will never be doing that with her puppy's trachea. That would be a bad mama. Not the mama, not the mama, not the mama. This is Taya, my nine month old Belgian Malinois rescue. We talked about why a collar too big can pull on the wrong part of the dog. But why else is size so important? Well, up here, we're looking at the leverage point. Shall we sit? Good. When I give just the gentlest correction, I have the leverage right here. If I change to a different point, she has the leverage. It's down low where a harness would be, where she would have all the power, yes. And see, she has the power, she wants to misbehave. But I'll put the collar, the lead, back on the collar that gives me the leverage, Taya, sit. Good girl, oh yes. Oh, so pretty, good girl. And now I have control. How do we keep it up so high? It, the tension right here in the slide. That, if the collar is too big, it won't stay in the right place and it will slide down her neck and we'll lose all of our leverage. All the collars we get returned are not too small. They're too big and they slide down the neck, defeating the whole purpose of having the training collar up where it needs to be. Ordering too big is what most people do wrong. But what happens if you order the collar too small? That's where you actually get a little forgiveness. When you adjust the slide, you can make the collar bigger. That gives you more room. If you've got a young dog that's growing or if you're uncertain, it's always better to be smaller than bigger. You're thinking right now, great, you showed me how it works and why size is so important, but I can't order the collar until I know how to measure. Let's figure that out. Once again, down low is where our daily collar is. That training collar, we gotta keep that up high. So we're gonna measure up all the way just under her jaw here. Now, unfortunately, for those of you over the pond, uh, we, our measurements are not in metric. We're still in the King's method. We're gonna go by inches here. When you make that measurement, keep it up high and tight, just under the jaw. Right there, I come to 13 inches. Good girl. Hey, show me sit. And when I put a 13 inch collar on her, It stays up high where it should be. And when I draw it tight, there's a gap. It doesn't quite touch. The gap doesn't get less than an inch. We want that inch to inch and a half gap for a perfect fit. But once again, it's always better to be too small than too big because we can always let a little bit out. There we go. 
Thanks for watching this episode of Keeper Collars TV. If you have any questions at all, please make sure you email Sue at KeeperCollars.com. And as always, as long as you're having fun training your dog, tail up, you will have a happy dog. Thanks again. See you next time.